Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and this is part four to our RTS tutorial series. And I'm super excited for this one. We're going to put some enemies in, and we are so close to putting lasers into this game. And that's going to be the coolest part, probably. So let's get started. There's a lot to do, so I'll try and do this fast. The first thing we're going to want to do is you're going to want to duplicate your fighter sprite and make an enemy one. So I just made it like red. It's the same exact sprite, but it's red. And then you're going to want to duplicate the ship, the object player ship, and we'll call this object enemy ship. And for now, we're just going to not touch it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a script up here, and we will call this script enemy ship um, ship attack okay and we'll write that in here script enemy ship attack and we're not going to pass any variables um, so just for a little bit of visual feedback when the enemy ship is attacking I'm going to make it red so the way we're going to do that is we're going to do image blend equals equals C red and I'm really just doing that for testing right now later on we're probably going to take that out so friction equals 0.5 because we want it to stop while it's attacking now we're going to do some checks um, and some checks for variables that we haven't created yet so we're actually going to go create some of these variables if um, instance exists foe and foe does not equal negative one. So that looks really similar to our check for the target, right? So uh, each object is going to have a foe and a target. And then we'll decide priorities. Like if it's moving towards the target and it sees a foe, what should it do? Should it keep moving towards the target? Should it attack the foe? We'll decide that later. But for right now, we're just going to uh, Direction equals point direction x y foe dot x foe dot y. We're just going to point at it if distance to point um, foe dot x foe dot y is greater than 96 pixels we are going to want to start chasing it again so image blend equals C white so change back to the white color and state equals chase so we'll change into a chase state okay pretty easy there so that script is done now we're going to do a script chase because we just wrote that in there so let's do it we'll call this uh, script enemy ship chase and we'll call this script ship chase set the friction friction to zero that's kind of a horrible comment but friction equals zero move towards the player sorry the target if it exists so this is going to be pretty similar to our players one so if um, instance exists the reason we always check to make sure it exists is because you're going to get an error if you try and do foe.x and it doesn't exist on the screen. So we always want to check that first. So attack the target when the foe, when we reach it. So let's do uh, if 
distance to point fo dot x fo dot y is less than or equal to 64. State equals attack. Else motion add point direction x y fo dot x fo dot y so basically and then accelerate at your acceleration speed which was created in our initialize function and then we don't want to go too fast so don't go fast. If speed is greater than speed, speed equals speed. I love that's so funny to say. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this looks really similar to our player's movement script, right? Only the main difference being that we're checking for a foe instead of just a target. And if we get a certain distance, we want to switch to an attack state. But when we're not that distance away, we're going to move towards the player. So we're moving towards the player or the foe, but once we reach it, we switch to an attack state. Okay? So that one's pretty simple. Let's save the game. And we will create another script. This is for idling. This is our enemy script idle. So let's see, uh, script enemy ship idle script ship idle and set some friction friction equals 0.5 because we want to slow down when we're idling if foe does not equal negative one and instance exists foe. What are we gonna do? If distance to point foe dot x foe dot y and less than or equal to 256. So that's gonna be the enemy's view distance state equals chase. So we're just idling there and a foe or a player gets within 256 pixels, um, the chase is on. We're gonna start chasing that player. So that's what this idle script does. It just makes it so that the ship doesn't, like it's gonna chase you if you get too close to it. So that's part of the artificial intelligence of the enemy. So and then there's something we change in the ship init. We have to create the foe variable. Foe equals negative one. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's go into, let's see. Let's go into our object enemy ship. Um, and we're gonna go into the create event. Right now it's exactly like the player ship and we don't want that, so. In the create event, we're gonna change a few things. First thing we're gonna do is if instance exists object player ship foe equals instance nearest x y object player dot ship. So what does this do? Object player underscore ship, sorry. So what does this code do? Well, this code checks to see if there are any player ships in the room. If there are, it finds the closest one to itself and sets that to foe. So the enemy ships always know where the closest player ship is and that's gonna be their foe target that they're chasing after. This only does it in the create event though and we're going to want to do this in all of the events. Well, not all of the events, that's ridiculous. We're gonna want to do this 
in the step event as well. So in fact, we can copy this code right here and come into our step event. And this is gonna be, let's see, first we'll wanna put this so we know where the foe is all the time. And it's not just updated in the step event. Then we're gonna change this to chase. We're gonna change this to attack. Well, we probably could have left it as idle, but else if state equals idle and what are we going to do? Well, we're not going to do script ship move, we're going to do script enemy ship chase and down here we're going to do script enemy ship attack and then right here we're gonna do what? We're gonna idle script enemy ship idle okay so as you can see the enemy ship is gonna be very similar to the player ship now we will want to delete this right here, global left released. We do not want to, uh, no, no, the right one, sorry, global right pressed. Delete that right here. Okay, because we want to be able to select the enemy ship, but we don't want to be able to move it at all or do anything with it, because eventually we'll just have it so you can select it so you can see its health and stuff. Now let's go to our uh, let's duplicate this player fighter duplicate and we'll create object enemy fighter and we will uh, assign the enemy fighter sprite now we want its parent to be the enemy ship so not the player ship the enemy ship and we're gonna go to our little room over here and I'm going to put this enemy object just like clear over here for now so it doesn't chase us right at the start so we can make sure that everything's working and save real fast and let's run this and see what let's pray that this works because we changed a lot of stuff like a lot of stuff and it's a little hard for me to remember exactly everything that I changed so sometimes these tutorials can be rather tricky so let's see, our enemy should be down here somewhere. Oh, yep, you can see it came and chased us, and then once it gets close enough, it turns red, which means it's in its attacking state, and it would be attacking firing lasers at us. When we move away, it slowly turns and looks at the closest ship. We move away from it, it chases us, and voila, that looks pretty awesome. So we've got the basic artificial intelligence in for the enemy ship and just really quickly I want to make sure of something. I, uh, I know I changed some stuff with like foes and so I want to check really fast to make sure that you guys are up to date with what I have on my files because I've, what I do is I have two separate files so I do one of them on my own to make sure everything works and then I redo it again on a different file for you so hopefully I'm avoiding discrepancies there and uh, because <laughs> it would be really really easy to run into some simple little problems because of that you know so it looks like I'm uh, looks like everything is basically the same as it was before so you guys are good to go I am going to so I've started doing a Patreon page, and if you guys don't know what Patreon is, don't really worry about it too much. I'm actually going to upload a video here in a few days explaining it a little bit more. Um, I'll put it in this in the link to this uh, to this video if you want to go watch it and find out a little bit more on your own. Uh, so you feel free to do that. But I'm really excited for it. I feel like it's going to help me to get more time to make more videos for you because really I like I'm doing what maybe two videos a week or something right now I'd really love to be doing a video every single week for you guys 
or I mean every single day for you guys. I'd love to be doing all of your tutorial requests because you guys have so many requests for me and they're all great requests. I, I really want to do them all but this takes a lot of preparation for me. It takes a lot of time and I'm you know giving you guys these videos for free which I, I love to do that and I would never charge for my videos but it does take time and so I'm hoping that through Patreon it will give me a little bit more flexibility so feel free to check that out in the description if you want to uh, if you don't want to that's fine too don't worry about it I'll upload a video later that'll explain it a little bit better but I appreciate everything that you guys do for me all the support that you have given me I started this YouTube channel in January and it has been an amazing ride for me it's been super fun and I've learned so much about Game Maker and so much about teaching and helping you guys and I'm excited to continue to learn and to continue to make videos for you so be sure and like this video if it, if it helped you out and share it with your friends follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I will talk to you guys later